Hello, BookTube. I've got a poem for you today to start our rainy weekend here in Boston. A very rainy day. The rain moved in in the pre-dawn hours I was reading in bed. I watched it happen. I, I heard the first raindrops fall uh, before dawn, and it has rained more or less steadily since then. Uh, a couple of points this morning, pouring rain. Uh, and with more to come, I get the strong suspicion. I get the strong impression from the data that I've looked at. Uh, this storm is going to, uh, is that this sort of temperate, even warmish rain is at the front of uh, a front <laughs> that is going to bring howling winds and a little dip in temperature. We'll see. We'll see what the afternoon and evening is like. Uh, but that's no reason to, to, to uh, slow down on poetry, right? So I've once again gone back to the FSG Poetry Anthology. For our stars in Chiro, Jonathan Glassy, champion of poetry for the whole of his publishing career. Uh, I've once again gone back to this. This is what it will look like. This came out around Thanksgiving. So this will still be in hardcover in your bookstores. And this is what it looks like. It doesn't have a dust jacket. Just, just a naked hardcover for $40. Uh, and I've been liking it. I've been exploring it largely with you, and I've been liking it. I found another poem that I want to read you today for obvious reasons, for Steve obvious reasons, but maybe there's some, some worth it as well, apart from the Steve obvious reasons. Uh, this is called Even Homer Nods, and it's by Rowan Ricardo Phillips. Uh, it's from 2020, and the title alludes to the old saying, Even Homer Nods, mean, that, was, that was coined centuries ago, and that means that even in Homer, who is was until the 21st century universally regarded as great, there are doll patches, right? Critics have been saying for a thousand years, more than that, that the catalog of ships at the beginning of the Iliad is Homer nodding. It's Homer not realizing that although the chapter might have served a function at some point or other in the origin of the poem, it's boring to your current readers and should be curtailed or cut. And that's true in a couple of other places, too. I would argue that's more true in the Odyssey than in the Iliad. Uh, but that's what the phrase means, even Homer nods. Uh, and here's the poem. And I should point out, the poem is very, as you can tell from the date, 2020, it's very contemporary. Uh, so I might stumble a little in the way that you read it. Uh, but we'll be talking about that as well. Uh, you can be a mother who knows a god, and you can ask him for magic armor. A shield, the width of Saturn's widest rings, some helmet in the new or ancient style. Fill your arms with defenses for your child. Take the peacock feather you've been offered and plant it in that helmet's crown, or keep it for yourself to use as a pen. Note this was the only option you were offered, stylist or witness, witness with stylus, so that you'd circle down the drain with death, mourning in either silence or sound bites, surrounded by silence and sound bites. Life like this, having been polished to shine in the normal ways things shine these days, a dull lull, the type of insufficient glare we used to call out on sight as useless. Glow, but now in new darkness we feel a need for a consolation of presence. And as when my mother passed me the soft shield, the breastplate like rice paper, the helmet bright as pyrite can be, we already knew that this was part of the old cycle that I would die soon without a weapon, and she'd live on, and we'd do this again and again and again, without ever knowing we were the weapons ourselves, stronger than steel, story, and hydrogen, here in America, where we wonder, still, after everything that's happened, why anyone bothers to read the classics. Now, there's a strong voice in that poem, and you could tell from that awkward point in the middle how thrown I am by the weirdness of contemporary poetry. Because that's a whole sentence. It just goes on and on and on. That, that, it's a whole sentence where if you're not wary, as at one moment in that reading I was not, you will be thrown by the fact that you have a capital letter starting a new line to change the emphasis of your, of your, speech, of your speech, right? Uh, let's see here. Life like this, having been polished to shine in the normal ways that things shine these days, a dull lull, the type of insufficient glare we used to call out on sight as useless glow, but now in new darkness we feel a need for, a consolation of presence. That's all one thought about poor overhead lighting. It's all one sentence, but then again, there are only about three sentences in this thing, but they aren't punctuated except for the first one. The first line, you can be a mother who knows a god, ends in a period. And that is a reference to the mother of Achilles. When Achilles is sulking in his tents and the, the, the Greeks are being beaten by the Trojans, Achilles 
friend Patroclus begs him to put on his enchanted god-given armor and go into battle in Achilles' place. Achilles grudgingly agrees. Patroclus dons the armor of a better man than he is, a better fighter than he is, goes into the ranks, uh, conducts a lot of slaughter, gives the Greeks a momentary burst, and then is killed uh, by Hector. And the armor is stripped from his body, so Achilles is furious, angry enough to re-enter the war, but he doesn't have any armor anymore. And he asks his goddess mother if she can go to the smithy god, Vulcan, and get him to make a new suit of armor. And he does. Uh, and Achilles is presented with that armor. That's, the, that's what is meant here, not only by the first line, but also by the last line. Uh, about reading the classics, because this is all an allusion uh, to that moment in the Iliad, which is then stretched and transformed into a ritual that mothers produce, that mothers are forever giving their children protection that won't do them any good, right? Achilles' new armor famously does not protect him. He, he is certainly going to die. His death was, as his mother tells him at the beginning of the Iliad, his death was absolutely carved in stone the minute he decided to go to Troy. Uh, so he, he, this new armor is not going to protect him, and that's a neat, uh, that's a neat sentiment that comes out in this poem that mothers are forever bestowing upon their children, their sons, uh, protections that won't help them. Uh, what, what were we told? Uh, a breastplate like rice paper, the helmet bright as pyrite can be. Uh, we already knew that this was part of the old cycle, that I would die soon without a weapon, and she'd live on, and we'd do this again and again and again. Uh, I like that. I, I like it a lot. I, of course have my problems with this kind of poetry. This is contemporary poetry, and I think you can tell from the poem that the poet is smart enough and also, as elitist as it sounds, well-read enough to have written this poem in a formalistic way instead of writing it like this. So when it's written like this, this sort of run-on sentence -y type thing where one sentiment blurs into the next in a way that makes it almost impossible to read with your eyes the first time around, uh, when I look at that kind of thing, which is egregious here, it's, it's meant to draw attention to itself, I automatically think, because I tried not to be a snob about these things, or old about these things, I automatically think, well, okay, if it's like that, then what is the reason? Does it being like that, just the words running on and flowing into each other, does that help the poem? Does that serve the poem? Does that enhance some theme of the poem? And it does not. It does not. It's, it's, it's just signaling. That's all. It's just dress work. Probably because maybe the poet thought, if I were to do this with punctuation and, and stanzas, people might think it was a little weird, a little rococo. Maybe not. Maybe the author doesn't give a crap. Maybe the, it, this is just the prevailing style. But I, I would argue in this case, and in most cases where I've read this prevailing style, that it hurts the poem a little bit. I think it's still a powerful poem. I like it a lot. I have no idea why it's it's called what it is. I have no idea why that's the title. Uh, but I like it all the same, even though it was written in 2020. I just think, I think that uh, an aspect of a poem, like the, the lack of punctuation in this thing, the way it flows on despite the fact that the lines are breaking, if an aspect of a poem like that, which is distracting, doesn't turn that distraction, that reading disorientation into a tool that helps the poem, that helps the reader, then it need not be there, should not be there, <laughs> in my Philistine opinion. That's, but, but I still liked it. I still liked it very much. Even Homer nods by a poet I've never read before. Uh, so we're, I think I'm going to stick with this anthology for a few more days. Uh, it doesn't matter, right? No one's watching these poems, these poem videos anyway. But I think I'll stick with this. for. I want to get a, a better feel for this. I've liked the things that I've read in it. So I, w I will keep uh, dipping into this, and we'll see what treasures we can find. So we'll find out next time what, what I turn up next. You can guess, no matter what it is, I'll have plenty of stuff to say about it. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to wrap this up, but I'll be back. Thank you, BookTube.